So, um, my name is Shalene Madwana and I'm an independent art researcher, cultural professional and for me it is a delight when I get to speak about curated exhibitions, heritage sites, monuments, anything that brings in art and culture together. Um, in this instance, I'm speaking with you all about perceptive oscillations, which has been curated by Jason Tucker. She's right here. And she's brought together artworks from the long-standing practice of the artist Asim Paul. He's right here. Um, now the thing is, um, as a curator myself, I also understand what it is that a curator does. Uh, what Jason has done for us, which is very interesting, um, in a long-standing practice to then select works that reflect milestones, changes within an artist's practice is pretty much one of the biggest voices a curator can bring for an artist's practice. In this show, we're also going to be able to see that big change in Asim's practice. Um, one of the ways to approach this is with a very weird question, which is not nationalistic at all, but more informative. Have you all heard of Mande Mataram? Am I right? Now the author of that uh, song is Mankim Chandra Chatterjee slash Chattopadhyay. Now where he was born and where uh, Asim's family originates from is pretty much the same village. Right here. Um, one of the ways to kind of talk about that part of present day Indian boundaries is to always remember that beyond what would be the harshness of war, which would be how India and Bangladesh's national boundaries get decided. There's also the soft fluidity that comes with families that have been through migration. If you all have had families that have gone through that, then that is an experience that you all are very intimately aware of. If you all have not, then we, we also must understand that there are generations that get informed by migration. So Ashim's practice is also one of those as well, where the idea of the boundary, which is nationally made, and the idea of the line, which is one of the biggest sort of ways in which you talk about abstraction, gets you know intermingled. Now, if I were to ask you all, what is abstraction? Please give me all honest answers. Anything that you know about this word doesn't have to do in context of art, but anything. And I'm happy with any answer, and I can work from there. Anything, what is abstract, what is abstraction, anything. It can be a feeling, it doesn't have to be defined properly, anything. Okay. It's simple. That's it's simple. simple. Yeah. That's very interesting. Simple. Perception. Perception, yeah. Abstraction is a product of our perception. Of course. What else? Anything. You can build upon each other's answers. I think abstraction, it really um, says. It, uh, it is of course it's not a representation like how things are represented in a realistic way but in a very um, like it's very subjective also how artist wants to represent something through his or her own yeah, forms so his or actions something. or expressions absolutely right yeah. actions expressions it's, it's something that's very simple it's a perception about you know uh, what's going on in the artist's world mm -hmm. and I think here we're privileged to kind of enter into Ashim's world through that. Um, one of the things that is colloquially understood about abstraction is um, that it comes from the lines we see in landscapes but here what Jason has done what and highlighted about Ashim is that that's not the only one way to enter the idea of abstraction. It can also be through life experiences which are so subjective it can also be through observing everyday things like a national border and what and how that has impacted your life, especially your parents and grandparents. I think the richness of that and how to bring it through without figuratively showing these things, without realistically showing these things was a challenge for me because I'm more attuned to that world. So this itself was me coming out of a comfort zone and talking to others about it and understanding more myself. And in that context, some major names that we have in the Indian arts industry are what Jason has referred to. So if you all would have ever heard of Azarina Hashmi, if that word has any <laughs> recall value, um, or if you would have heard of Ganesh Kaloy. Now these are 
major names that we sometimes also refer to when it comes to abstraction from the forms and formats of a line. We want to understand more through these big names. Now these are uh, names that are kind of defined in some way how abstraction gets understood. It's like an industry recall brand. Uh, for those that I'm contextualizing this for who are not enough. Now, what happens when we try and understand through Zarina Hashmi or through Ganesh Aloy? All of these are artist practices that also come at abstraction, the line, very, very differently. Now, if abstraction was supposed to be so subjective, which it is, everyone would come at it so differently but the same emotion would be there. Something very interesting between a Zarina and an Ashim also is that they think a lot about home, belonging and border and boundary. Yes. But their actual outcomes look so different while being in the genre of abstraction. I struggle to sometimes understand that, you know, if you have to draw a border, why wouldn't you just make it like a border? That is the limitation in me, which is why this is even more special to have this conversation with you all about the same. Um, to remember that it's not just landscape is very important. Landscape becomes one of the easiest references to understand abstraction and line. We're pushing through that because Jason picked those works in Ashim's practice to highlight that part. Now today's format is that I'm gonna take you through three rooms, uh, talk about what I have understood of the same. And in the last room, we have a sit down conversation with Jason and Ashim where they maybe take it over from me or not, or I'm still okay. Um, so first, let's actually head all the way there. What was the one thing that uh, you all would have experienced in the last couple of years? In, uh, not in isolation. Isolation? Excellent, but yeah, yeah, yeah let's go with it. Yeah, too much worse. Um, same. What else? Meditative. Meditative, yes. You know, you have that. Quiet time. Quiet time. Peaceful that. Quiet and peaceful. <laughs> okay. So, with the words that you all have brought forward, I think it is very interesting that when Ashim and I spoke, oh, come join it. When Ashim and I spoke, we also spoke about this. That I was like, you know, what, what was it? Last two years, what was it like? He also brought a lot of time. Time which allows us to think. Time which allows us to kind of be productive or unproductive in different ways. What I learned is that in the last couple of years, Ashim also kind of would make all the work that you are seeing, he would also make it simultaneously, which for me was very interesting. Because that's like reading books simultaneously, which takes a lot of parallel processing across different uh, books. Here, we're looking at that hyper level of parallel pro processing across different canvases and different mediums. When I say different mediums, I want to introduce you all to one medium over here. Any guesses and they're all correct, just say it, don't you think about it. What does this medium look like? What is this possibly made of? Clay, what else? Clothes, we're coming closer to sculptural mediums. Anything. Think of the bowl. Fermented bread dough, right? Go on, go further. So the base, that is iron, metal, let's just stick with metal, forget which metal, it doesn't matter. Metal, right? And what you're seeing is work with ceramic, so we're, we're in that area. Now, Ashim actually told a lot to me about his introduction into ceramics and how ceramics are also one of the hugest parts of his expression. Now, how does abstraction happen in ceramics is, you know, one thing that we talk about a lot with him. A lot of the paper references that you all have been given are some of his older ceramic based works. But what is this doing over here? When you see these in a line, anything here that is similar? I mean, there are lines and dots. There are dots here, right? If you see this one with me, there are dots everywhere. In Ashim's understanding, if we had to kind of take this macro version and expand it, these are the dots that you're seeing over there. Now, why, why particularly this? Um, if you're colloquially from the north, and like me, not, I mean, I love and hate Delhi, but <laughs> if you're from the north, you're from at least from this area, um, we refer to the Bori in a certain way, right? Jute bag. 
Well, the thing is, the magic of linguistics, the magic of the fact that words can mean so many different things in different contexts. In the context that Ashim and Jason spoke to me, the Bori was also understood within the Bangladeshi Bengali context as something that you attune to a Rangoli of a sort, how you'd adorn the house as someone enters, and how you'd adorn the house in different ways. So you also have the round cow dung cakes that we have as well, right? Now the thing is, one is that circularity, the other is why are we coming back to the line? There is still a line in this, there are many lines in this, right? Um, one of the thoughts that repeatedly come, and which I can see a lot, and Jaisal has also seen a lot, uh, I saw it in the conversation with Ashim, but Jaisal seen that through, her, through his practice, is the boundary line of the division between countries is also a line which keeps coming back. So a lot of his work within this room has a lot to do with the form of the line from a certain aspect of division, from a certain aspect of something that is far, something that you belong to, something that you can connect with. And to have those dots, for me, which is very interesting, one is there's a perspective shift completely, right? He's trying to expand what you're seeing from in a very pixelated manner. He's expanding it completely and showing it to you over here. Um, the other is it brings two very different, actually, mediums back together, which is, um, you know, you're working with acrylic on canvas, which is, again, one of the traditional ways to express traditional painting forms. But then you have ceramics and sculptures, which I would like to add that historically, these are also one of the first ways you express. If we were to push abstraction and go back to our social sciences curriculum when we were very young, one of the first ways of communication, one is non-verbal, if you look at it historically, but the other, if you push yourself, is basically cave paintings, which were made of the simplest of lines first, right? So when we think about that, one aspect comes through, which is communication and meaning through that aspect of the lines. The other is in looking at the color palette over here, right? If you look at the color palette of the room, what does it make you feel? What does it make you remember? Anything, anything. What do you feel when you look at the color palette? Anything. Soil, land. Soil, land. It's brilliant. It's what else? And there's also one anomaly there. I know that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very bright, uh, pastely blue. Um, but there's soil, there's land. What else? When you look at the colors over here, you look at the colors over there, here. What do you feel? Walls. colors that you all are all wearing you find a home in this room as well. Um, I think one thing to remember that this is how we understand this in the art industry. Uh, Ashim would have signed and would have written a year underneath mm -hmm. in most of the words. That's, that's kind of how artists talk about when something was made. Which is easy to assume that all of this is probably just made in one year but that's not the case. As he explained it to me that um, Time for him also becomes a simultaneous working process. So right now when you look at 2022 or 2020, I just have to caution you that there was a lot going on in similar artworks at the same time. Whereas 2022 just becomes where he finished, but not where he started. So I think that is one interesting thing to remember about this process where we're having a very different type of translation of what he's feeling about home, about this is about land, about walls, about the soil, and how that comes in over here. Anything you want to pipe in, or shall I just go to the next room? Next room. Next room, then. One of the things curators have to do is also figure out what goes where, why are they opposite each other, how do they talk to each other, um, what should be the feeling that you all may feel when you enter. So. We were in that room, you know, it's a very interesting conversation around what you all felt. But if I were to ask you the same, there's a whole other riot of colours over here. When you're here, how do you feel here? And what are the words that come to your mind when you look at any of the canvases over here? 
something, anything. Again, as always, their feelings, they cannot be right or wrong. <laughs> At first, like, the paintings are overpowering. Here. Yeah. Yeah, overwhelming. Here, yeah, in this yeah, one. Uh, and then the other, it is more neutral. Okay, yeah. yeah. Also, space, this is a smaller room. That's a larger room. What else? These three have a very indigo kind of blue. Okay, right. And yes, that doesn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else? Yeah, yeah, this <laughs> energy. Um, here's here's how I understand um, what Jason has done very interestingly is, you know, we had lines and we had those dots, right? Uh, lines and dots also from historical communication. If we were to move ahead, coding and binary understanding of language comes in, right? Now here, that language just shifts completely. It's edgy. It's a different vibe. There's so much indigo. But also you find the love, the kind of, these two just kind of talk to each other about the, that language of that group and then it just shifts when you look over here. So there's something that is obviously happening um, within Ashim's mind, within his understanding of his surroundings that now gets expressed in a very different form. While it is still using lines, it is non-figurative, it is still using splashes of colour, but it is still saying very, very, very different things than what that film was telling you. So, one of the things that I, and I'm sure Jaisal has got a lot, is, <laughs> I too can make this, what is the big B? Um, and, and it's always a struggle as curators and educators for us to answer those questions, or it is a struggle still for me. I don't know if it is still. <laughs> Um, the thing is, yes, of course, if you all can make it, everyone should make it. Please keep creating art. You haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't. No, I, I, I have an answer to this, if I may. Please, please. Right? And I don't need to be discreet. Just yeah, yeah, you give the answer, then I'll give my answer, and then we'll see. Chalo. So, even if you do this, even if you do this, I want to see you dedicating five years and ten years to it. Yeah? So, what's gone into this? It's not one year's work or two years work. It's 10 years and 15 years of thinking, of experiencing and building this language. It's, it's, it's constructing uh, an idiom which is expressing something. That is why we are all standing here, right? To understand it. So it's the dedication, the time that has gone into it. Anyone can make it, of course. I can make somebody stand here and, you know, what is it? There are splashes of colors and it's easy, especially this one, right? But will it give the same emotion? Will it entice the same feeling that we are feeling while we are standing here? So it is that, that emotion, that intent, the time that goes into all of this. Over to you. And how I would answer that is also, of course, Ms. Ram is like, what is the big deal? I can make this. And I'm like, you should make it. Of course you should make it. Um, and I find that when it comes to this, it isn't just the final product that you are seeing. As Jason rightly said, um, it is a build-up of decades, especially the older the artist, it's a build-up of so many decades of life experiences that lead you to this point. And that also gives you the reasoning. The reasoning isn't just I made it because I can do something similar. The reasoning also comes from the depth of Ashim's experiences, what his family has seen, the cities and villages they've seen transition around them, uh, the identity of uh, statehood, nationhood, belongingness, and how those have shaped him to give him the reason and the meaning behind making this. And still, he and many other artists that we know are generous enough to say that this was what I thought, but what you think is as equally valid. So if you were to say that these are indigo fields, he would also be kind enough to accept that because in the end it is also about what you are seeing in it. But what we want is that you see, right? That you try to at least see, that's kind of the point of pushing ourselves to see work, especially work that are more difficult to understand that we that don't make sense because therein lies a tougher, richer, more interesting story. And I, I, I was put through this test in this last week where I'm like, I'm struggling. And, and the more conversations that I had with Ashim, the 
easier it becomes to come closer to that which is why we've dedicated a section of today just for him to speak to us about why the why that we all are curious about shall we shall we in the most dangerous question at is uh, uh, did you like which one did you like <laughs> what did you feel oh my it's very difficult when the artist asks so give others ask me very difficult when the artist asks and i don't think one of the ways to build relationships with artists is also honesty but delivered from the heart um so i did tell him which is not something i usually say is that my father is a gentleman farmer which means that he's 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 worked with farmers for about 15 years um and they used to grow sugarcane if we know of sugarcane actually when it grows as an agricultural crop it actually turns from green to yellow and i said that it's only because of the childhood memory of seeing those fields with my father this room works for me simply because i see those greens and yellows now that is what abstraction allows it allows me to give so intimate an answer to ashim because this could be anything that i wanted it to be and that is it's a freedom in abstraction which figuration because it is a form that's realistic doesn't allow and that has a tone meaning so when you all were seeing this room what were your like feelings and musical notes musicality what what were your responses what did you feel like and even everybody in the gallery also can see <laughs> Yeah, what did you all do? I missed out on the story that you told me, but this one did make me feel like a, a farmland because there I come from school, a lot of rural landscapes that can make me feel like why something beyond that, and that I could see grass on the landscape. Anybody else? Anything? Really? This one. Sunrise. 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 You can see about the same because nobody is cancelling each other out because that's kind of like the point. So for that's me, the... it's like a burst of color, like from the <laughs> white, and he's just like suddenly he's discovered color. <laughs> so you. So that one was like that was tall grass, and now that's called fire. So that oh, color. okay, chal. That's. <laughs> that's yeah. Also, yeah. True. Absolutely. True. True. That gave me kind of a you know the red films. The old and dying one. Oh, right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just look. And these straight lines remind me of all the exercises we do in class. I'm in class. Anything else? Anything else? And you also, Jason. I mean, I have another one. Anybody? I'm curious to know why this one. <laughs> From what I understand, um, in terms of lines and dots, what I think that I like that Jason has done, she's kept a moniker in each room. Actually, there's a continuation of that room there and here also, but not taking up the whole space. Just a moniker, which is just like one little bit of an annotation that okay, this is also where I'm at, but this is what's happening in the room. But please, Jason, go for it. Yeah, so he begins, he begins there. But that's that's when I started seeing his practice, and I saw him break away from it, you know. And, and as I said, burst of colors, right? But I wanted to show how he's coming out of it, right? In each room, also, and not just put okay, the same kind of work uh, works in one room and then. So I intentionally kept these two here, but if you see, they're on this side of the wall, right? Just to show that he's breaking away. He's it's a break free, you know. So just to have that. And when I when I met him, and then this is the first room I entered, and I was like, okay, this is it. Now every other room cannot be as great as this room. <laughs> uh, the primacy recency effect. Um, and I kept asking, actually, why, why, what is it, what is it? Just explain more to me. Explain more to me. And um, I, I think the the best 
part is also that he's like you tell me what you thought and also he would make us go through how and what was the chaos in his mind because he said that it was how do i express chaos and my chaos can be someone's calm or my chaos can be someone's complete numbness blankness my chaos can be someone's complete lack of confusion and my chaos can be someone's confusion as well but to somewhere have a language that represents the chaos that is happening within me because i see the chaos outside of me that for me also became slightly important to show but which doesn't which doesn't mean that his whole relationship with borders and lines some went somewhere else no that also exists and so does this and i think therein lies a beauty when there is multiple levels of processing happening within an artist because there lives the yearning for belonging and land and home while having one and the one that you have which is kolkata that you also see changing from a calcutta to a kolkata you see it changing from multiple types of urban peri urban and rural relationships that keep changing over there something that if you are from delhi you've seen that happen as well when delhi became from delhi to delhi and cr there's a lot of that happening as well so this was seeing that chaos and wanting to translate it into something but also allowing me the space to say that you know these are the farmlands that i saw my father grew up on and i grew up on those as well <coughs> so i think there is that relationship and abstraction which very much allows all of us to see jason's musicality see my childhood memories see everything that all of you all also said like delve into photography or look at farmlands again or look at dissonance which is you know one way to kind of maybe describe the whole exhibition interestingly so so you can do all of that and i think for me like level unlocked in my learning curatorially okay like this is this is kind of the why behind abstraction and you know a deeper understanding required to understand the artists that come from this space and ashim being one of them is kind of you know allowing us to see this so beautifully from the intimacy of his mind and i'll take you to the very last piece and then in finally sit okay sit again a complete energy change the one most obvious thing should be one biggest change one most obvious thing what is the thing that you notice i mean we've seen so many different phases and eras what are you feeling here There's a different vibe. There's a different vibe. Yes, yes. Which just so recently you were talking about this, just maybe like half an hour ago. Food. Yeah. It's <laughs> a different mood. Different mood. What else? Why? Why is there a different mood to the mood? What is the lighting? What else? Black. There's just fusion, so much fusion with black, and everything that it also exists around black in its negative spaces. What else? I just feel that there's a lot of transience and duality in these, like just, just two opposite parts, right? I mean, you of course have many grades within your black and white parts. And I dress for this room. I just saw. <laughs> this this is the room. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, what else? This room is more modern than it has been to. Absolutely, absolutely. It is. It is very much monotone. and i think one of the biggest shifts that happens is you're also seeing ashim's work in a certain scale so far you're seeing it in a certain scale and there you have a very different maybe a very different scale you know in front of your eyes and in art industry terms i would say that sometimes when there is a off color wall or a wall of a different color than what the rest of the space is we call it like a signature wall which is basically only one wall that would be painted a different color and i think jessel has to answer why she's chosen this color which i don't know if you can think about it um yeah i, I think it would be great to understand the scale yeah so yeah yeah but smaller scale works different colored wall i think that's please also, uh okay so i actually want it black <laughs> you wanted this black chalo to kuch aur hi ho raha hai okay but you know i was so painted i was happy Because this was not the complete black, and then I felt the black would take away. Do we? Yeah, so, take a bit over. Maybe. Right. Yeah. So, so I, I was very happy with this color again. With this, it's 
got this indigo blue, it's got this little blue tinge to it. So it's giving it a little bit of warmth. And if you see the paintings, they're totally black. There's, there's no tinge in the color, <clears throat> you know. And why these small works here? So, um, as I said, I've been looking at his practice for a few years, and he has many of these sketches, right? He's done like multiple, like he keeps doing it. And uh, like, I mean, he was very excited and he wanted to do an entire wall and put up many. But I said, no, I just want to show seven. Like, there's seven in number. Okay? So, again, this is my reading, my interpretation is because I see a lot of music and sound in his work. So, I read these as the seven notes, the seven uh, intonations. And uh, um, it's, it's basically. Uh, you know when you play with a string instrument, all of you all know what a string instrument is, right? When you play with it one string and it has such a resonance, right? It just remains with you. So that is the feeling that this room and this is what I want to create in this room. That's why it's very intimate. It's, you, you see both the works, uh, the, the two distinct styles, right? The very classical and the, and the very, I call this very percussionist. And then you see the base, the, the base of the all, of the structure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I find that we've kind of come to the magnum opus, which is connecting scale, it's connecting color. Um, you have a certain quietitude, which you felt very differently in the first room that we went to, and maybe didn't feel in the other rooms because there was that intent of, you know, so much color and movement. And again, when Jason talks about music, I can see it when she talks about it. When she says it, then I'm like, oh yeah, I can see where. And um, if we were to somewhere kind of look at words like magnum opus or penultimate, it's also something that brings, it's a capsule that brings everything together. So here, for example, especially in this room, you have the lights and dots that we started with, mm -hmm. right? you have a lack of color, which is interesting considering between white and black, there are actually so many colors that you'll be able to see in all these works over here. Um, for me, that instantly becomes rain in a very busy Calcutta street. One, because I've witnessed that. Two, because it is raining. <laughs> and that's how fluid uh, feeling can be. Um, and I think this room also allows us the, the quietitude to speak which is why this is also one of the, like we went a little bit back and forth, but this was the space that I definitely wanted us to speak in. And um, I definitely wanted um, that Ashram kind of opens up and tells us his narrative, which is always more important, as I always believe, more important than the curator, the gallery, so awesome. it's always what the artist says, what the artist does, and we're the conduits for that. And that's, that's about it, actually. And that's as much attention as you should pay to us. And this goes for the start of the evening now. Please, <laughs> um, So we'll also now reorient ourselves over there. Um, please keep referring to the sheets that you've been given because now we kind of uncover why we've given you those images to look at. And 